Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Switch and Click and today we'll be talking about the top five mistakes you can make while you're modding your stabilizers, which means clipping, lubing, and band-aid modding. So we did this today. This is my drop control keyboard and we modded it today. And uh, let me tell you, I made all five mistakes. This is what they sound right now. So they all sound really good. The space bar is still a little bit loud, but that's okay. It's totally fine. Let's get to it. So number one, make sure you know what stabilizers you will be working with prior to taking apart your entire keyboard. For example, before we modded this, we tried modding our Razor. Um, Black Widow co-star stabilizers and we have no idea how to work with that. We only knew how to work with cherry style stabilizers um, which is what we've been looking at on YouTube, on to guides, on tutorials, on the reddit and then when we saw the co-star ones we're just like what do we do with this? So we closed it back up and then went to this keyboard. So that's number one. Make sure you know what stabilizers you're working with you can look that up on Google, you can look that up on like the product page, you can email the manufacturer, you can look on Reddit, there are a ton of different websites where you can find out this information. And then once you know that, look up guides pertaining to how to mod that specific stabilizer type. The most common ones are cherry stabilizers, then after that are the co-star ones. So with the co-star ones, you can lube them and you, yeah, you can lube them and you can band-aid mod them, but it's like a different band-aid mod, not the same way where you put a band-aid on the PCB to um, dampen the sound of the stem touching the PCB when you press the key. And then the other kind, the ZOPC stabilizers, I've never seen anything about those. I think those are just so great that you don't really mod them in the first place. So that's mistake number one. Uh, make sure you know what stabilizer you're working with and know how to mod that stabilizer. So number two, make sure you know how that stabilizer is mounted onto your keyboard. Is it PCB snap-in? Is it PCB screw-in? Is it plate mounted? Is it like hook on? How is it mounted? So you need to know this to figure out how to get it off. You also need to know this for other things such as like how, how much of the keyboard will I need to open up? Will I need to take it completely apart to get access to the PCB? Or maybe I can just take off the plate. Or like the CoStar and the Razor, all we had to do was clip them out. Um, and we could have lubed them right there, but we decided it wasn't really worth it. So we just put it back together and tossed it back in the drawer. So that's number two. Make sure you know how your stabilizers are mounted to your keyboard so that you know exactly how much of the keyboard to take apart and you know exactly which parts that you need to work with. Alright, number three. Make sure you take a picture of your keyboard before you go ahead and take it apart. On this, this has a pretty standard layout, however, Due to the lighting, you need to take a picture with it with the lights on so you see all the keys. Why do you do this? So that when you're taking everything apart, if your keyboard happens to have a non-standard layout, then you can look at your picture and be like, oh, that's where that key goes. For example, n most people don't remember the key, the layout order of the keys down here. Like Alt, Function, the other one, and Control. Like that's those are buttons that we don't regularly use or even think about. And then when you're taking apart the stabilizers themselves, make sure you take a picture of that too. Make sure you know how the wire clips on and clips off and which hole it goes into. Because there is a right way to put it back together and there is a wrong way. And trust me, I put it together the wrong way and my left shift button whenever I pressed it would just be stuck like that. It wouldn't bounce back up. So now it's better bouncing back up, thank goodness. So that is mistake number three. Make sure you take a picture, just like when you're taking apart other things. You wanna know what it looked like before so you can put it back the way it was. Mistake number four is not having a clean 
and ergonomic workspace i first started taking all the switches and stuff off on the floor and that started hurting my back because it takes a longer time than you think it would it's actually a pretty time consuming process i'm going to show you all the supplies that you need have them with me your clean and ergonomic workspace should have fabric bandages your switch puller your keycap puller you should have a pair of tweezers in case you're lubing your your stabilizers and you don't want to get the grease all over your hands. You can use tweezers to hold onto the stems and the stabilizer and the wire. For dielectric grease, we got this for $12 at Home Depot. Little tiny like Crayola brush and then we have a pair of pliers. We did not have flush cutters but if you do use those we use pliers to twist the feet off to clip them. So yeah, make sure you have a clean workspace. When you're taking off your, your screws, make sure you put them in a place where you know they won't get lost. Don't yet let your cat play with it because our cat is just crazy with those things. Put your keycaps in a certain place, put your switches in a certain place. Don't mix them up. And then last, number five. Make sure you test every part before putting it all back together. I made this mistake as well. I've made all these mistakes actually. So I put it all back together and bam, left shift doesn't work. So what do we do? We take it all apart and do it again. So what I should have done is without mounting every switch and every keycap and stuff, I should have just tested one key and see like, did it move? Did it bounce up and down? After putting all the switches back on, I should have tested each switch to see if it actually registered an input to the computer or if I bent the switch or not. Instead of putting all the keycaps on, typing, realizing G, Y, 5, W didn't work, taking those specific ones out and the switches, fixing the switches, then putting it all back together, I could have saved so much time during that entire process had I known that I should have tested each thing, each step that I did them in order not to repeat steps. So you get what I mean? I made a lot of mistakes and if this is your first time, you probably will make mistakes too. It's easier watching a YouTube video of doing something than actually doing something yourself. I thought it would take maybe 30 minutes. Everything, including all my mistakes, took about three hours. I was super frustrated. I was just like, you go do it. I don't want to handle this anymore. I had to walk away, step back, recollect myself, and then be like, okay, this is fine. So if this is your first time, don't worry if it takes you a long time. If it's hard or if it's frustrating, you'll get better at it. I'm sure I will. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And if this video helped you, let me know in the comments below. And the question of the day is, when was the first time you first modded your stabilizers and how did that come out? Did it take you a longer time than it should have? Were you frustrated? How did it feel? Were there any mistakes that you made we should know about? And yeah, just leave those all in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, do that too. Press like if you like the video, subscribe if you wanna, if not, that's cool too. This is Switch and Click, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!